This case study is based on my own work. Way, way back in 2004, I was involved in a 3 million euro project with some eight to 10 labs across Europe and one in China. On the project were people from a wide range of disciplines, including sociologists and psychologists that were researching people's views on GM and fortified foods, biochemists, botanists and chemists. We were looking at food safety and GM crops in particular. In the project, we focused on two main crops, rice and potatoes. Thanks to our Chinese colleagues, we had a rice that had been engineered by irradiating rice to produce a plant with a low level of phytic acid. And thanks to the group in Aberdeen, we had a potato with a gene knocked out that was responsible for the production of a particular glycoalkaloid. So, why were we concerned about phytic acid and a glycoalkaloid? Well, phytic acid can chelate positively charged ions such as zinc, calcium and iron, and a lack of iron in the diet can lead to anemia, which affects one in four people worldwide. So if you have a poor diet, low in iron and heavy in rice, then the phytic acid will bind the iron so it is not available. Therefore, a rice low in phytic acid could mean more iron is available from the diet. Now, potatoes contain glycoalkaloids, and while potatoes are perfectly safe to eat, a reduction in the level of some of the glycoalkaloids present could be beneficial as certain glycoalkaloids have been linked to cancer. Our research showed that in the case of the low phytic acid rice, we had a mutation in a protein that prevented the production of phytic acid. However, this protein was also a key component of the glycolytic pathway, and its absence meant that for each glucose molecule, we only got one turn of the TCA cycle. Not good, and explained why the rice grew poorly. In the case of the potato, we found that it didn't make the glycoalkaloid, but instead turned on another gene that made a different glycoalkaloid. So, total glycoalkaloid content was the same. So why am I telling you all this? Well, it is to highlight that we don't always get what we expect or want when we carry out science and genetic engineering. And the fact that a potato can easily outsmart a group of really bright scientists.